everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, today is Monday, it is the 22nd of January. I kind of thought I would do some talking first thing this morning so that I can try and like loosely plan my week. We're back on the archives this week, which is nice. I haven't made an archives video since December, which was now long. Um, so I thought I could just chip away at one this week while I do some stuff. Things have been weird for me sleep-wise, as you know, so it's been a bit chaotic the last couple of weeks. I'm behind in some illustration work stuff, I need to organise my shop again. Things have just slowed down a bit and I need to try and fix it, basically, so... Tomorrow, I think, I'm gonna be organising some stickers. Um, I need to pack sticker sheets, which always sets me back. <laughs> um, and then... I have some small catching up to do in here, and then also the sofa came. I showed you that yesterday's clip, I think. Um, it's working out really well, but I'm like hesitant to talk about it in case I somehow jinx it. Um, obviously, we're still very early days. I've only had it for like 36 hours or something. It's been like three days. Um, and I'm always really nervous about jinxing things. That's like a weird quirk of mine, I guess. I'm kind of superstitious. Um, but so far, so good. I'm definitely falling asleep quicker. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to talk about because obviously I didn't expect a sofa to cure an underlying sleep disorder. Um, I mostly just wanted something to try and help me cope until my sleep clinic appointment in the summer, when hopefully the like professionals can help me. Um, but for the time being, it's a relief. It's nice to have my space be more dynamic, I guess, to have somewhere to work and rest and sort of cozy up, and then to have less stress around the idea of bedtime and having a bed. Um, I won't dwell on it because it's kind of depressing to talk about, but if you're someone who has sleep issues, then you get me. I've been talking to a lot of you about it recently and it's been really nice. Um, but so far, so good. And it's really cute for filming, <laughs> so that's a plus. I feel like my stage expanded slightly. Um, in my Filofax, I am still here. I really like it still, no qualms. Um, I am still thinking about archiving primarily as my thing now. Um, I actually tried to order the Franklin Covey archive binder. Um, Lindsay had one and it was really cute with stickers and stuff and I've seen other people using them and I thought like that was probably the best option. At first I was hesitant to order one because they're based in America and the shipping can be expensive but I was like well I think it's worth it. They're only like $20 I think or like $17 something like that. Um, and then I found out that they don't ship to the UK. I filled out like all my details and it said like please ring customer service, like not even email, <laughs> please call customer service and there was a phone number and I was like um okay. So I didn't ring them because I don't know what kind of charges that would have. Um, but it seems maybe they don't ship to the UK. They have the one of the colours, like the purple one, I think, on Amazon UK, and it would ship to me, but it would cost £50. Pounds, um, and then like £10 shipping. So £60 pounds for a binder that is only 20 American dollars, which I don't think adds up. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's because the shipping is a lot more and they haven't written it as much, and maybe the cost of the item covers the shipping. But I don't know about 50, 50 pounds. <laughs> it's a lot of money for an archive binder, um, especially when it's just like a cardboard. Like it's not like fancy, fancy, you know, it's just meant to be usable, um, if you know what I mean. So I don't know. I'm going back and forth about it because I'm like, well, I can't I can't find another solution. I've been looking and I can't find one. So should I just bite bite the bullet and order? the Franklin Covey one for 50 British pounds, which is like cry worthy, um, knowing that it will work fine and that it will hold like a, a lot of pages because they're like they're thick, they hold like I don't know how many pages that would be, a lot of pages. Um, and also if I needed to buy a second one in the future I know that they would still be making them, they're not likely to stop making them. So it's like in favour of it, it's like it would work, it would hold a lot of pages and it's reliable. And then the downside is like the cost is immense <laughs> um, and especially as a recurring cost potentially even if i only buy one a year 50 pound is still like i don't know if i'm i'm nervous about it i guess um so i don't know i have been looking like on amazon and etsy and stuff for personal size like clear binders like the k-pop girlies use but they're mostly a6 um, the only place I can find a personal size one is Etsy and it would ship from China, which again is that thing of like, okay, it's cheap because it's coming from China, but then the shipping would be like six weeks and then it doesn't feel like a reliable thing that I could repurchase over time. So that's, that's an issue because I want something that I can keep buying to hold pages over time. Um, so the archive thing is still a whole situation. I did buy some treasury tags, um, 
I'm looking around my desk for them. I must have put them somewhere safe and now I can't remember where the safe place is. But I bought some treasury tags to hold my pages. And I guess if it comes to it, I could just use treasury tags and then put them loose in the box I showed you in the last video. Um, but I think ideally for my personal pages, my journal pages, I wanted to put them in some sort of binder just to have them collected up more like a book that I can flick through. And then my commonplace pages... I wanted to have loose in the box, like index cards, like that was kind of what I wanted, <laughs> that was the plan, the thought I guess, the concept, was to have one half as index cards and one half as more of a book. Um, and I could just like tie the personal pages together with some string and stuff, um, or treasury tags, like I say, it's basically the same thing, but I don't know, I did kind of want that extra feeling of them being kept together safely in a way I guess, I don't know, I just, I feel strange about it. It might just be the easiest option though, is to treasury tag them. I might have to try it and see how I feel. Um, otherwise, as I said last time, the Filofax binders are not the end of the world. It just sucks that they're prongs. Honestly, such a jarring choice for them to have made. Like, why couldn't it have just been a little binder? <laughs> like, it's so strange that it's prongs. I don't know why anyone would choose that. Um, if you're a really big fan of the prongs, let me know why this is a thing, because I, I struggle to understand this choice as a design and as a, I don't know, as a choice. <laughs> um, when it's closed, you can kind of look through it, like you can pull it relatively far out to look at the pages, but it's not the same as being able to flip through it one at a time and like properly look and be able to read things back like it's kind of awkward and i'd be worried about damaging my pages and also i guess maybe the integrity of the binder and then if it pops open like things are going to spill everywhere because they're not really held in place so if you open it this way and you're trying to read it or reference it you're taking a chance that it's gonna gonna pop open <laughs> um so i just i don't know but the nice thing about these i guess is that they fit in my box um like perfectly um so i guess and they're only like 10 pound these are really cheap someone suggested the file of fats clip books but they're that bit bigger again and then also they're like 20 pounds 22 pounds which is still twice the cost of these i think so it's sort of like a i don't know if i want to do that either like and it, they only have 25 millimeter rings i think so that's only really like one book at a time's worth so then every time i fill on my folder or whatever you call it my cover I'd have to spend £22 to buy another cover to hold the pages, <laughs> which is like, I don't know, maybe I'm looking for something that doesn't exist. I just wish we had some sort of international or UK equivalent of the Franklin Covey compact binder thing, because this is like, I don't know why it's so hard to find something to just archive pages. Like, how is everyone archiving their pages? I've been in the Filofax subreddit, like, keyword searching things like archive and, like, filing, storage, everything, trying to find what people are doing with them long term. But I think most people are throwing their pages away at the end um, because they're just practical use. And then once they're filled and they've been referenced, they're done. It's like a work thing. So it's really frustrating for me. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Um, but I guess moving on from that, because I don't want to talk about it all day, um, it's just, it's the forefront of my file effects problem now, it's like, what do I do with my pages? Um, but moving on, so this week I'm gonna film maybe some file effects stuff catching up. Um, I'll show you, actually let me show you what I've done in here, because I don't think I've shown you super recently. I think we saw these sofa pages, I bought a different sofa in the end, <laughs> um, not this one. I bought this one instead, um, and I feel really good about it, it was definitely a better choice than the other one. Um, but I took some photos when I went to Bath, and I put those in here. And then I saw The Boy and the Heron, I really liked it, um, it was it was really good, it was definitely more of like a surreal one, a bit more abstract than some of them, but I really, I really liked it. It reminds me of like a lot of the Ghibli films I would watch as a kid, uh, like the less popular ones, <laughs> I guess if you will. Um, I really, I really enjoyed it. It was good. I saw it with my brother in Bath and his girlfriend. Um, and then I also watched Echo. Um, I, I don't really care for Marvel anymore. I'm like as burnt out on Marvel as you can be, I think. I just do not, like, you could not pay me to care. Um, but I do love Daredevil. I'm like a Daredevil stan. <laughs> so, because Echo takes place in the same corner of the universe as Daredevil, I watched it. Um, and I'm really, really glad I did because it was really good. I really loved it. Really, really enjoyed it. I'll probably watch it again. Like, I think I'll add it to my list of, like, comfort rewatches. That's how much I liked it. So if you're also hella burnt out on Marvel but you're curious, 
I would say definitely give it a go. It's a relatively short story, it's like six episodes, um, much to my relief when I realised, but it tells, I feel like it tells a complete story and it has a satisfying arc and a satisfying ending, um, and then the themes and stuff throughout are really cool, so it's worth a go. Um, I printed the like cinematic poster, would you call it that? The cinematic poster, and then they have an American Sign Language version. I found that one after, so I printed that one as well because they're both cool. Um, this just, it really hits hard, it's so sick. <laughs> um, so the colours on these pages are kind of nice together, but just some media tracking there. I've been kind of rating the stars, I've been drawing those little stars to add a, add a rating. Um, I just think it's kind of cute, I guess. I was thinking I might change the dot colour and have one for like reviews and media logging, since I'm just doing it on these pages. The only page I'm using differently is the book reviews, which have their own pages. But I think maybe for watching stuff, because I like to see when in time that happened, I keep it among my journal pages. So it might be nice to have a tag for that. And the tag I use the most is the purple one and the grey one, which is commonplace in journal respectively. It wouldn't hurt to take one of the other tags away, possibly, for the time being, so that I could have a media tag. Um, at least then maybe I would get a more level use out of my stickers. <laughs> um, and then just some writing about, I think it was about how the sofa's going kind of thing, sort of reviewing how I'm feeling about it all. I was listening to this cover by the Deftones. Um, and then book reviews at the back. I finished Throne of the Fallen by Kerry Maniscalco. Um, it was really good. It was kind of, it was not quite what I was expecting, I guess. But she did, apparently she did say on social media, I just didn't read this because I don't follow social media, but... Um, she said that this one was more of an adult book than a young adult book, and she wasn't kidding. <laughs> I was reading it and I was like, oh my god. But it was really good and the story was very compelling. I really liked the characters. I liked Envy as a character already from the other series, and I was hoping to see more of Sloth, which we did. So it's a win for me. Um, I think there might be more books. I don't know. I really hope so because as far as universes go, it was really fun to be able to step back into that universe and also some of the characters from the other book came into it, like the two mains came into this book and that was a nice surprise. So I did really enjoy it. It just took me by surprise a bit, I guess. Um, I also recently read A Study in Drowning. Um, I can't remember who writes it. Is it Ava Reed? Did Ava Reed write it? I feel like maybe it's something like that. A Study in Drowning. That was kind of good. It borrowed a lot from Welsh mythology. <laughs> um, I was reading it and like I didn't realise that going in, but it seemed to be almost hinting at like a Wales that is not Wales kind of thing. And then a lot of the language and the myths and like a lot of the words and stuff. And then like, it was just like, it was weird because I kept thinking like, that sounds like a Welsh word. I feel like I know that word. But it's not quite right. It was like, it was very strange. And then I looked the author up and she's Californian, so I'm not sure what the deal is. But it was it was still interesting and it was still a really good read. It was kind of gothic and fun. Um, it was definitely like a gothic, a gothic vibe, like the build up of the suspense and stuff wise. And like the, the moodiness and like there's a mystery and it's like, it's very weird. And like the house is rotting and it's by the sea, it's falling into the sea basically. Whole thing, kind of cool. Vibes are pretty good throughout, good build up. Relatively good satisfaction at the ending, I think. Um, and then like all the Welsh stuff was so like, I don't know, as a Welsh person I guess it was kind of cool, I could like pick things up and I was like, oh I know what they're implying, I know what that means kind of thing, recognise those words and what she's trying to say with them, but it was, it was also a bit, a bit, a bit weird, but I guess because it was meant to be fantastical so it wasn't Wales, do you know what I mean? It was just kind of jarring as a Welsh reader maybe. Um, apart from that, not a lot going on in here pictures in here still, daily pages. I need to fill out my review for Study and Drowning, so I will do that. I need to print the little picture. Um, and then I think that's all I have going on in here at the moment that's new. As I say, it's been kind of slow because I've just been preoccupied with the sofa and not sleeping, <laughs> so it's been a really like a really jarring time. But the archive stuff is kind of bothering me because I need to find a solution. It's not full yet, I still have room in here. Like, I'm okay, there's still there's still a good amount of room. Um, I keep forgetting to stick this down still. Um, no need to panic yet, but obviously it would be nice to maybe archive some pages when we move into February. Um, sort of like a seasonal transition. And I don't have a solution yet. So if you if you are a Philobax or a binder person, in personal size, because you can find a lot of stuff for like A4 storage, that kind of thing, I don't need that. If you use personal size and you have an archive solution, I'm begging you to tell me what you use. Um, it's a whole thing and it's really keeping me up. 
so let me know. Um, plans for this week, roughly. I would like to do some file effects bits, catch up, illustration shop stuff, catch up. So I want to pack the stickers sometime this week so I can get those sorted. I'm really late selling them. I was meant to do it at the beginning of the month and I've been such a mess that I haven't done it. Um, so I will do those <laughs> this week. That has to be done this week. Um, I kind of want to order some enamel pins, <laughs> a bit of like a wild card. I would like to do that. There's nothing really holding me back from it. I kind of already have the design. I just need to sit down and order them. I don't know why, but that kind of like relatively small task is always something I'll procrastinate, like almost unintentionally. I just kind of forget that I want to do it, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I would like to do that maybe. And then otherwise just kind of tidying my room a bit. It's been a bit chaotic since I built the sofa. Um, Wednesday I might go to London to see a friend but I don't know if she's free yet, she was meant to check and tell me. If not it will be like normal errand running I think, so maybe I'll film that, maybe not. Depends how it goes. Um, and then the rest of the week is just kind of resting. <laughs> um, I don't want to set too much to do and then freak myself out, so the only real thing to do is maybe keep looking for an archive solution, catch up on some pages, and pack the stickers, that's the most important thing, um, and film for the archives while I do it all. So there we go, that's the intention, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I don't know if I'll film another talking segment, I'm always worried they're too long but then you, some people tell me that's the only bit they watch and they skip the rest, um, so I guess I don't need to worry too much about it being long, which is maybe kind of nice, but there we go. That's what we're doing. It would be good to archive these Christmas pages, if nothing else. Okay, I am gonna get on with it.
It's now Thursday and it's just after lunch. I was working on the sofa this morning, filling some pages and catching up. And I think I've cracked my archive problem. Um, I don't wanna to get too excited because it's not very exciting, <laughs> but I think I might have cracked my archive problem. Um, I, I I'll just show you. So the, the Filofax archive finder, the problematic Filofax archive finder, um, I was looking at my treasury tags this morning. Oh, let's spill them. Um, I got these from Ryman, which is a UK stationer. Um, and I think they're 25 millimeter ones. They're really short, just for reference. I got out my old pages so I could put the treasury tags in them to see how it looks. And I was like, okay, it's not it's not terrible. It's maybe not as cute as a binder and as, as compact and neat as a binder but it works and it's fine you can flip through it so i was flipping through the pages and i was like yeah this is okay it's not the end of the world treasury tags are relatively inexpensive i think it's like six pound but you get like 12 so it's like two pound each which you know is not great but is also not the end of the world um and if you can hear wednesday in the background she's really not happy like she just won't sit down so just ignore her um so I put this on and I was like, this is okay, I can look through it enough, it's kind of slidey but they're not falling apart, you know, they're not really going anywhere. Fine. And then I was like, the prongs only go through like two of the holes, don't they? So then I was like, oh, I wonder if I could use the prong binder, <laughs> hang on, um, and the treasury tags, which I gave away, I should have taken it out a minute ago, but it works like i could have it in the compact binder that fits in my box and i could use the treasury tags to hold it all together and to let me take it out and flip through it without the pages falling everywhere um and i think it's a solution <laughs> like it's not the cutest thing in the world but it works and it functions and that's literally all that matters um so i counted these pages there's like 49 pages so 50 ish basically if I can archive in like 50s, that's all right, or maybe like 60 would be good. So that would be like two months, a month and a half, two, two and a half months, I don't know, something like that, varying. Um, I don't really do a page a day, but like 50, 60 pages is fine. That's kind of a reasonable amount of time. It would be like splitting the year into four or five, I guess, chunks. Um, and then the binders are £11. I'm okay paying £11 every three or four months to put my pages in. I think that's fine by me. Obviously, treasury tags, I won't need to replace them this year, ideally. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's not as expensive as as having to import a Franklin Coffee binder. Um, and I think, I think it would work. I don't know, this is so boring, but I'm like, oh my god, I think I cracked it. I had to come and tell you. Um, I guess that's my solution, really. Um, which is kind of good because if I had a big binder it would be kind of annoying because my current pages are not hole punched in the middle they're like slightly longer at the bottom than at the top like the punching isn't centered on the page um, just calculator I guess I don't know but I messed that up a bit and I've been having to try and compensate every time I punch them to keep them in line with each other which means that once I turn all of this over basically I can kind of start fresh and punch it properly <laughs> um which would be nice and then i can put these pages away and it won't be super obvious um at least in theory but uh, yeah i think maybe i worked it out i think maybe i worked it out i don't know i think i think it's a good solution sometimes it's really just as simple as that like this whole time i was so overthinking it looking for a completely different binder but really all i had to do was find a solution to bind them within the prong binder <laughs> um so there you go just sharing that in case it helps anyone <laughs> um and because i'm kind of excited about it i guess but there we go solution i troubleshoot it um nothing going on in here i filled this one page i have a to-do list for this week now um and that's it from when i spoke to you on monday really 
I am up to date on my sleep log and stuff this month. Wherever it is, that's not it. Uh, here, up to date for once, and things are on track. I think this afternoon I'm gonna sort out my February pages so I can kind of start archiving stuff. I guess what I could do, um, first of all, I need to order a new storage binder. Um, but what I might do is while things are in progress, I guess, is kind of gently move things over into a storage binder. Um, I don't know how many pages I'm on. I could probably still fit February in here actually, and it would be fine. Um, the only thing is that when I have to take like the whole book out, that makes me feel kind of apprehensive. I don't like to start from nothing again, um, which does make, archiving a little more complex just because it weirds me out but maybe that's just something I would get over with time and it wouldn't matter um but for now I'm super pleased with this solution just wanted to update you for Monday okay I'm gonna make my February pages and I need to print more commonplace I'm actually out of pages so I'm gonna do that I know this is the third talking segment of the week and I'm really sorry, um, although you guys often say that the talking is your favourite part, so maybe I don't need to be sorry. Um, I always think it's just kind of a cop out, but there's an update, there's a kind of a plot twist and you guys always say that you enjoy when I bring you along through my weird journeys. Um, so someone had mentioned to me a couple of days ago when I was filming the original segment <laughs> um, about a company called Daytimer that you can get an archive binder from. They, they asked me basically if I had come up with any archive solutions because they didn't like the Franklin Covey binder or the Daytimer binder. And I was like, who the hell are Daytimer? <laughs> um, I've done so much research. I've put like every single combination of like personal archive storage, binder, file of facts, whatever into Google and I couldn't find anything like that. Um, and then I searched Daytimer and I had to scroll for a bit because Google is trash now, <laughs> but I found it. Um, and they do make archive binders and I think they're based in the UK. They have an American company as well that is like the same brand, but there's one that's based in the UK and I have no idea how it works. Um, I ordered a binder <laughs> a couple of days ago and it came today and it's weird and I didn't talk about it yesterday because I didn't think it was going to arrive. Basically, once I had looked it up and I had found the website, I bought a personal size like archive binder because I was like, oh, perfect. And I hadn't discovered my other storage solution yet with the treasury tags. So I bought it. And then I realized yesterday that I hadn't had a confirmation email or anything. <laughs> um, and I was kind of weirded out, a bit sussed out. So I tried to look at them on Instagram and like their other social medias that are linked on their website. And it's like all abandoned. It's like all been abandoned since like 2021. Um, their Facebook was abandoned in like 2016, but they still sometimes reply to comments and people still comment sometimes. It's very weird. Um, I have no idea what the status of this company is right now, but much to my surprise this morning, the binder turned up. Um, it like arrived and I was like, oh, that is so weird. I had really thought that it was like the company was abandoned and nothing was going to come. I never got a dispatch email or a confirmation email or anything. It was super weird. And nowadays, I guess I just don't trust anyone enough, but it came this morning. Um, and it's okay, it does hold my pages, I'll show you, but it did come kind of dinged up. Um, and because it's kind of cheap, <laughs> like it feels cheap, um, it's taken like the paint off, I guess, or the paper. The back is also kind of messy here, which I guess doesn't super matter, but it does just have an overall feeling of like, this is not like a nice item. It's just like a bare minimal, like it's so bashed on this one side. Um, but it does hold the pages and they do fit. Um, this is cut kind of messy, if you can see, but it's like, it's fine, isn't it? Like, I don't really have the luxury of being that fussy, all things considered. It does the job. It comes with stickers to put on here. This is their logo, the little clock. Um, and I think, you know, it's okay. It's fine. I put my 2023 pages in here just to check if they fit, and they do. So that's cool. It's the long, the long ones, like the Franklin Covey binder, basically. I guess this is kind of our equivalent. I don't know if maybe the Franklin Covey ones are better made or not, but this one is just bare minimum. It's made out of cardboard and it's kind of kind of rough and also very easily scratched and dented, <laughs> apparently. Um, so I don't know what to do now. I could use this one. I guess maybe I kind of like that I could get so many more pages in there. 
but then in the last 24 hours i think i got kind of attached to the idea of the treasury tags in the other binder so maybe i'll stick with that um let me know what you think i guess the only thing is that this company was so weird to order from that i don't know if i trust the longevity of it I, I can't say that I have a lot of faith they'll be around a long time. They've been around for a long time already, since like the 90s, I think. But um, all the Facebook comments are people saying the quality keeps dropping and stuff. So I don't know if maybe they're just a bit past it in the UK. The American side seems bigger somehow, but I don't know. Um, it is a development, I guess. I didn't really expect it to arrive. <laughs> Um, also this week I made these little post-its, I realised I forgot to talk about it, but I made these on Tuesday. I didn't film anything on Tuesday while I was doing it because it was, there was a storm, it was like really dark and noisy. <laughs> um, the roof creaks really bad in my room when it's windy, so it was a strange day. But I made these little post-its just because I kind of wanted something that I could stick, like you know how I stick stuff on one side as like a little like flap? I wanted something that I could stick to add more text sometimes, or to cover something up sometimes. Um, every now and then when I try to erase something, it doesn't really work and it leaves this like horrible little smudge and I don't like it. Um, the nature of friction pens just means that they work better with some paper than others, and this paper isn't always the best, at least not for erasing. Um, so I made these little, these little post-its. I think they're cute. I printed them out in two sets because I was testing the textured paper that I use versus the Kukuyo paper that I write on and print my inserts on. I think I prefer the appearance of the textured paper, um, but I can't deny that the Kukuyo would be better for writing. Um, but it's nice to have different textures in the book, otherwise I get kind of weird about it. Like if it's all one texture and I never introduce any other texture, then I find it impossible to stick anything in. <laughs> so, I don't know, I think they're cute. I might put them on Patreon. I haven't finished organizing them, they're really messy right now. Um, but just something I guess I experimented with earlier in the week. I took all of the illustrations from Everyday Gloom and like some of my sticker sheets and stuff. I think, I don't know, maybe they're kind of neat. But anyway, that was a weird side project on Tuesday. Um, I did also finish organising all of the winter stickers. Um, I bundled them all up. So if you're in the UK and you want some winter stickers, go get them. <laughs> They're in the shop. Um, I have like fully stocked them. I've packed them all up. So there's a lot there. Um, I really like them. I think they're really cute. I've been using them all month. That's what this is from. Um, and these as well. Uh, digitally, they've been in the shop since December, so if you want them for that too. This week, I also redid some of my planner sticker designs. I've been wanting to kind of stock my shop better recently, so I've been working on that. I'll put them on screen and hopefully you can see. Um, I think they're a bit cooler. I was talking to my patrons and they were saying things like they wanted like more stars and stuff, like I use in my illustration work. And then a couple of newer like icons, and then uh, just more of everything <laughs> so that they can use it a lot. So that's kind of what I was trying to do. I took some of the more like boring like one-off illustrations out of the planner sheets and I put more stuff that can be repeated and used a lot. So hopefully it turned out cool. Um, I have no idea what I'm working on today, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I was thinking about putting stickers on my Filofax binder, <laughs> but now I don't know what to do about this other binder. Um, I think realistically in my gut, even though I wanted something like this at first, I think the Filofax one is going to be more trustworthy long term. Um, so I guess maybe I will still put stickers on on the other binder. <laughs> I ordered some stickers on Etsy when I was first starting my binder search so that I could sticker it when I found it. Um, so maybe I'll still do that. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I don't think it was a weird week. I just was working on different stuff. This is just what the week actually looked like. Like this is the stuff I was into this week and what I was researching and working out. So I hope you enjoyed it. The sofa is good. It's super good. I'm really happy with it so far. It's so nice to have a different space to hang out in that isn't the basement of our house. Um, it's nice to, to have more of like a studio and resting space, like a cozy space rather than like a bedroom that I work in. It's like it's a different mentality somehow um, and it feels better. So that's cool. Um, any questions about anything in the comments, let me know. I do try to put all the links of stuff in the, in the description, but I do sometimes miss stuff. Um, but 
yeah also still please let me know what you're archiving with i would love to know if you have information on that like i am open to other ideas <laughs> i'm very curious about how people go about it because it must be 50 50 people throwing away and people archiving like I, I like to imagine that at least 50% of all planner and journal people are sentimental rather than practical. It has to be like a relatively even split, like all things considered. So if you're in that group that is sentimental, please tell me how you're archiving your loose pages, <laughs> um, especially for personal size, because it just seems so awkward to buy for, and I'm not sure why. Um, but otherwise, I hope you have a good weekend, and I will see you next time.